All right, Yvonne, I'm adding you in because we're just going to cause trouble in the chat if we don't start soon. Trouble? Us? We, we never have caused trouble in any Phos4G, Jody. Never. No, we haven't. That's, that's lies and done lies. At least at Phos4G, they can keep an eye on us and know what we're up to. Um, <laughs> that said, I do have to start the little recording show here in a minute. So I'm going to duck out. I'm going to share your screen. Okay. Um, hopefully the little logo blip in the corner won't be in your way. It's fine. It's fine. It's okay. perfectly fine. Excellent. We've got like a minute, so your last couple of moments off the record. Yes, uh, I want to say I am exhausted. <laughs> Do you know that phosphor feeling of, of, of the last day of talks after having watched so mm. much stuff your brain cannot take anymore? Well, I got to say, you just look terrible, so. Uh, well, uh, thanks, I guess. <laughs> no, you look good. Bit overexposed, but you know. That's... Yeah, uh, yeah, that's the sunlight. Yeah. We're good to start. So without further ado, and probably should have had less ado and more further, uh, I present to you Yvonne and theoretical peer-to-peer -peer tiles. Hi, I am Ivan, and, and this is not theoretical peer-to-peer -peer tiles because uh, this has changed over time, and now it's a uh, proof of concept of peer-to-peer -peer tiles. It's no, it's no longer theoretical since I sent the paper to the call for papers. Um, a tiny bit of uh, context here: I came from uh, I came to as Geo from OpenStreetMap. I was deeply involved uh, in OpenStreetMap in the early days of the project, and that that's significant because that's uh, the technology I know more about or the technology I learned on the first years of my GIS adventure. This means I used to know a lot of how the OpenStreetMap technology stack uh, used to work in that time regarding the tile server, the tile rendering servers, and then all the tile cache, and then how that fall, uh, falls down to the, to the web clients. Now, the, the technology has changed over the last few years. Uh, one of the things that I'm not really knowledgeable about are the, uh, the actual tile CDMs. And they do use GeoDNS. So whenever you look, whenever you ask for an OpenStreetMap tile, the DNS you are querying will um, send you to a, to a tile cache, which is geographically nearby you. Well, I, nearby meaning the same continent, which tends to shorten a tiny, a tiny bit the network transport times. Anyway, I have been doing a lot of weird things with JavaScript. I pretty much exhausted the um, all the browser APIs that could be exhausted with maps. I have done things with web audio. I have done things with uh, DOM mutation. I have done things with WebGL, obviously, tons of it. I have done things with the uh, GamePy API. So one of the few browser APIs that was left was WebRTC. WebRTC is what is being used in uh, in the present for one-to-one -one, uh, video communications. That's one of the main uh, applications for it. How it works is uh, you have a computer that visits a web page, and that web page will tell the browser to connect to a signaling server in web, in in, uh, or in WebRTC parlance. That's how it's called. And that signaling server is uh, responsible for exchanging a tiny piece of information from each browser that wants to initiate a uh, RTC session, which is called an SDP session description protocol block, I think. And once both browsers have each other SDP blocks, they can start talking between themselves without transmitting any data to the web servers or through the web servers. So the whole idea is, OK, I know or I expect the, um, the OpenStreetMap tile servers to be overloaded, because that's how they were in the uh, early times. So I want to lighten the load by doing peer-to-peer -peer tile uh, exchange on uh, with uh, all the web clients. I can do that with WebRTC. I can just have a web server, which is going to send that web browser to a single server and just to say, hey, I am looking at the map here. And that browser will start also fetching tiles from uh, a seeding tile cache. Then some of the browser will connect to the same web page, will connect to the same single server. And that second web browser is able to request tiles directly from the first browser. Please note in this diagram, there is no arrow between 
uh, the tile cache and the second web server, there's no line here. So that's the whole point. You don't need to uh, to do the tile cache to the second web browser thing because it's going the long way. Saving, hopefully, or the, ideally, it's saving uh, data center costs on the tile cache. That's the whole, that's the ideal scenario of this idea of mine. So I'm going to do a live demo because I love doing live, live demos and people love seeing this fail. I'm going to uh, restart this real quick. I'm going to reload the web pages. I'm going to clean the web, the browser consoles here. Okay, so whenever I zoom into the map or I move around, I'm going to request some tiles here. That's the whole point of having uh, the network, um, uh, the network tab open on the developer tools. I'm going to clean this up, clean this up, and I'm going to, on one of the browsers, I'm going to advertise myself and then the other is going to ask for a peer. When I'm advertising myself, I am sending the uh, web server, the SDP, so it can send it to a different web browser. That's how WebRTC works. So, uh, oh, what? Yay, it's failing live, right? Ah, I still got some connections and that's fine. I, I have three connections out of four advertisements. It's fine, it's gonna work. So now that I have the uh, both web browsers connected to each other by a uh, WebRTC, I can clean this up once again, and I can zoom in in this one. This one is asking the tiles directly to the web server to the tile server. When I zoom into this one, there is only one tile asked to the web server because the other three have come from the other web browser. Uh, in a similar way, if I zoom in here, I get four or five tiles requested, or six. This should be four, whatever. And if I go into the second web browser, no tiles have been requested, only one, because I have three uh, connections out of four that I'm asking, and this is a concurrent thing. But this proves the point. This is just the proof of concept that it's a workable thing to do if we would like to, ex to extend on it. I, I prefer to do this kind of personal concept instead of setting all the architecture to see, uh, to try and get an idea of how workable this is. Now, this has a lot of concerns, in my opinion. Um, and I will be uh, exploring some of this um, in, um, in a bit more depth. The, uh, the good things that I'm not going to touch more upon uh, is that this theoretically lowers the load on tile caches. Uh, and this is theoretical because I don't have any numbers of how much would it cost to keep the SDP blocks and exchange them and how much the load for peer matching is. And other good thing is that this can work on any kind of uh, data format, not only on images. So ideally it can work on vertical tiles, uh, style sheets, uh, whatever you want. There has been some previous work on caching website assets uh, not caching, but exchanging website assets between a peer-to-peer -peer network, but none of them has have been uh, relative to tiles because that they are a uh, special case. Um, the main difference between traditional peer-to-peer uh, -peer and map tiles is a normal peer-to-peer -peer or traditional peer-to-peer, -peer, you just care about a few files which are kind of big-ish, and whenever you ask for those files, you want all the file. You have the whole two gigabytes, four gigabytes, or 300 megabytes, whatever the size is. If uh, for this case, for uh, map tiles peer-to-peer, -peer, you want a tiny fragment of the whole space, and that tiny fragment is like 50 kilobytes in style, it's no, there's no big deal. There's not a lot of actual traffic to it. Uh, this has a very important effect on the uh, uh, peer matching algorithm because for traditional, you want to have complementing peers, uh, peers complementing each other so they can exchange the parts that are missing. But when you're doing map peer-to-peer, -peer, if we were doing map peer-to-peer, -peer, you would need to exploit spatial temporal proximity, the, the concept from caching. Uh, this is, uh, I, I made this copy diagram to um, illustrate. If you have two clients uh, which have the beginning of a file and a third client who has the end of a file, you want to connect the ones who don't have 
the same fragments in order to make things a bit more efficient. So these two, you don't want to connect. You want to make a difference or an XOR algorithm or something of the like to try and connect as many uh, clients as they have different fragments of the whole data set. If you are doing Maptile peer-to-peer -peer on web browsers, each web browser is going to be looking at a different part of the map. So there's no point on exchanging peers if they're looking at very different parts of the map, especially if you are expecting hundreds of clients at the same time, which is kind of the use case or the desired ideal use case for this. So this changing algorithm changes a lot of things because you're not worrying about fragments of a file, you're worrying about the bounding boxes. This also means that the web clients, the web maps should be sending the web server which bounding box uh, they are looking at, even if they are not requesting tiles from the tile server. Um, I will, I will go a bit more in depth into the problems that that implies uh, a tiny bit later. Also, I learned that WebRTC is absolutely awful to work with. Uh, there's way more network topology problems that I expected. Initially, I, um, I'm kind of lucky because I know, uh, I have studied the, I, the, uh, theory, the theory of computer networks, so I can understand why I need a stand server to hop through the NAT firewall and punch a hole through the, the port forwarding which would be solved with IPv6. This doesn't this doesn't make any sense for most of you, but it's something that has to be solved if this technique or technology would need would be deployed. There's a problem of tile invalidation because the open stream of tiles get rendered uh, quite frequently. So it's like, what's the lifetime for tile? Who knows? One week, one day, one month. That's a different whole new problem. You have to invalidate peers because browsers are closed or people just turn their computers off and they come and go way more frequently than traditional peer-to-peer -peer, in my uh, opinion at this point. And maybe one possibility, uh, which this is completely theoretical, is peer-to-peer -to -peer, peer exchange. Once you, have, once you have a cloud of peers, you can ask those peers to rely the information of peers to each other. So the signaling server should not need to exchange the information of the peers. The peers themselves do that. This also means that the bounding boxes should spread across the peer-to-peer -peer network, which is a whole new problem on top of the new of the new problems that we're inventing to make this happen. Um, there are concerns about information security. Um, the first one is a man-in-the-middle image replacement attack, also known as a Hasselhoff attack. Uh, just today, I learned that a Hasselhoff attack is a Spanish concept. Um, just so you understand what it involves, it involves putting a photograph of a nude posing David Hasselhoff with puppies in a place with where a nude pose of David Hasselhoff with puppies should not be. So this uh, this is the playful, innocent way of saying, hey, I can put any image I want in this device or this screen. This might be a security risk because I might be able to fool whoever is looking at that screen at the time. This is also being used for very basic computer security. If you leave your uh, laptop open and uh, alone with no password protection on the screensaver, people are going to change your screensaver and people are going to change your uh, desktop background to a photo of David Hasselhoff nude with puppies. If you don't understand this concept, I'm going to just leave this here for a second. Okay, that's enough. Um, this is the problem that might happen if you let peers provide their own tiles because there is no authentication protocol involved. And this is once again, the playful, innocent way of doing this. People will get annoyed. Getting annoyed is good. Getting false information on a, on a map is bad. And getting misled by maps that are not provided by an authoritative web server, but are provided by other peers, that's a problem. Um, so there's a couple of ways to overcome this. Maybe uh, checking against an authoritative source and then kicking out malicious actors and maybe some Byzantine consensus, which is all the rage because cryptocurrencies and two thirds of the network 
getting together on something. Uh, but this is something that I don't, uh, I know the problem exists. I don't know which is the uh, perfect solution to a problem because that's too much thinking, really. I, I just want to put everything in place and uh, in front of me and then think about it in depth if it's needed. The second security concern is the one I'm a bit more concerned uh, because I'm a tiny bit paranoid about this stuff. Uh, because you can allow any web browser to enter the network and exchange styles, ideally, this means that there, there's the possibility of a malicious actor to pose as a legitimate peer and then mine liquid information because this is information that you must give to other browsers in order for the system to work. What if that information is used for other purposes? You need this information to work because you need to provide other browsers with the geographical area of interest. You are requesting specific tiles with specific tile coordinates. You are providing them with an, with an SDP block, which is going to contain the video formats that your browser supports and the audit channel that your browser supports and how big the data packets is. And this leaks fingerprint info for the web browser, which is a concern. And most importantly, WebRTC can leak your IP address even behind NAT firewall and in some specific cases, even behind Tor network. That's a bigger concern, I think. You might think, hey, this is not a concern. I don't care if there's some malicious actor looking where I live or what part of the map I'm looking. The hell scenario, which is the worst case scenario you can imagine, is troublesome in my opinion. If you are in a war zone, and you browse maps of some place you want to go, which is against the law or is frowned upon or might get you in trouble, you have to assume that some malicious actor is going to be in that network checking for who is looking at this place to get your IP address and then uh, get your uh, ISP details, your name, and then know who also by getting your IP, they can direct a targeted attack against you and try to exploit your label amortities, um, inject trojans, et cetera, et cetera. This is a concern that might be overcame by blacklisting or denying some specific zones or bounding boxes, but then who decides which zones to blacklist? That's an uh, issue on top of an issue. You might be able to identify malicious actors. I don't know how. Uh, this is something that if this peer-to-peer -peer tile idea would be developed further. This needs a proper assessment. I don't have the answer to those questions. I know these questions exist. So does this work? Yes, it works. My two web browsers in my same local network exchange data between themselves, and I'm asking the tile server for half the tile. So it works. Does this offer the OpenStreetMap Foundation a possibility for lowering the costs of the servers and the network of the data center? Maybe. The issue here is uh, this short conversation I held with Paul Norman from the OpenStreetMap Operations uh, Working Group. Uh, a lot of the traffic does not come from web pages. So the web pages that the OpenStreetMap Foundation has control over is kind of very limited, and they don't have that much traffic. So also, they are being sponsored. So the, they, uh, the OpenStreetMap Foundation does not pay a single penny, dollar, euro, or cent, or whatever currency you work with. They don't pay anything for the cost of the uh, content delivery network for the tiles. It's all sponsored because OpenStreetMap sponsors, we love them as much as we love the OSGEO uh, Phosphate sponsors. Um, so doesn't really offer a immediate benefit. And as I said, it has a lot of drawbacks that has that should be worked before this would be released. So not really. It, it works, but it's not useful. It's nice as a technology demo, as proof of concept is quite interesting. I don't think this has the a big potential for actually lowering network load or for shifting network load to a peer-to-peer -peer network. Uh, one important thing that Paul Norman mentioned also in the uh, 
In the report for the Open Stream Operations Working Group, and the uh, he also held a talk at the Street of Map conference earlier this year, is that half of the clients requesting tiles are non-browsers, and one of one problematic. Um, uh, one specific problem they had was uh, some QGIS installations that were requesting tiles um, yeah, was just requesting a big bunch of tiles for a whole area. It was, uh, what's the name for this? I forgot the name of this, but yeah, it's a problem. So then again, if this idea is interesting, should we worry about creating a whole cross-language, cross-platform tile peer-to-peer -peer protocol? My opinion is that this technology is a cool idea. It has too many unsolved problems. It's interesting as a research item. It's not really a, it doesn't really deliver any immediate benefit. So that's it, that's all I have. And we have 10 minutes for questions about peer-to-peer -peer tiles, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. Um, let me start with the first question. So if you have enough users, can you turn off the Tilecast server and let the P2P? No, you need, you need tiles to be rendered at some point. You need a tile rendering server, uh, at least one place where the tiles spawn. Um, I mean, ideally, and this is very, this is, we're entering into the realm of the completely ideally theoretical stuff. Ideally, you could render vector data in a browser, you could theoretically uh, connect to the OpenStreetMap REST API or to a WFS service from within a web browser, render that data in browser with um, MapLibre, uh, OpenLayers, uh, VectorGrid, uh, whatever, uh, whatever map, vector map display JavaScript library you want take an in-browser snapshot of that, and then that could start seeding, seeding the map image. The, uh, in my head, the cost of doing that programming is way higher than the cost of having a cache and a server-side rendering engine. So. Thanks. Um, here's one I think you might have covered. Couldn't uh, sharing the B boxes be a privacy issue? Yes. <laughs> yes. That was a good yes. Question. Yes, they are. <laughs> I and once again, I don't know how that could be uh, fixed if it could be fixed in its entirety. Actually, the the there is also the question of whether the server logs for a tile cache are a privacy issue, because web browsers store the IP addresses and the file names that you request. So it could be. If the malicious actor were to be a tile cache, you would have the same problem, yes. Okay, here's an optimistic one. Do you have a URL for the live demo that we can check? Uh, can not really. The, the, it, since I don't think this has a lot of future, I, uh, I haven't published the code. If you want to, if you want to have a look at the code, feel free to write me an email afterwards. My email address is this uh, thing over here. You know, uh, yay. Well, no, 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 that, uh, I, I suck at drawing things with mouse. Write me an email. I will be happy to provide you with the source code. And I will be more than happy to let you think about all that can go wrong with this. <laughs> Speaking of all that can go wrong with this, the next question. Uh, would this be applied to maps from underground groups that want to share information and not be being stopped by governments? And the answer is they're underground. They don't see a map. <laughs> no. Okay. Oh, oh my. Oh my God, Jody. You do. Oh my God. <laughs> it's okay. You only have one more minute with me. So you can cope. It's it's fine. Uh, I don't think this is the technology you want to use to exchange information within uh, uh, an underground group at all. Uh, you should rely on privacy-focused tools. This is not a privacy-focused tool. This is a proof of concept of a technology which idea is to lower network traffic. Not The, the, the idea of peer-to-peer -peer map tiles is to lower network traffic, not to provide privacy. 
So, I mean, if you want to use it, fine. It's like a friend of mine once said, it's like trying to assemble a piece of IKEA furniture with a fork. It might not be the best tool. If you want to use it, go ahead, but it might not be the best tool. Okay, and the final question is, can you share a link to your presentation? Um, no, because it's not online. It's a it's a open office file on my desktop. So uh, no, uh, I, I don't have it online. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. No is also an answer, so I accept that. <laughs> Thank you very much, Yvonne. Uh, a pleasure as always. I can say the same, Jody. Thank you so much. You are now so cut off. As, as am I.